Should one assume, though, that you are not ready to make any move, any overture on this issue to the Bush administration? One thing, and also the issues that Iran and the U.S. pay attention to, is another matter entirely. The U.S. Is, has to deal with Iraq, with Afghanistan, for that matter. At the beginning of those crises, what were the Americans saying? They said that we want to help restore peace and stability and democracy and uh, hand over the fate of the people to themselves. But seven years in Afghanistan, six years in Iraq, have passed for the American administration. Did these materialize? We don't believe in such. Well, they said that we want to help with security in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and we want to, we want security cases to be returned to the government of these countries. In the past six months, we have seen an improvement in the Iraqi situation. But on, on the Iranian nuclear issue, uh, Mr. Minister, would you be more inclined to negotiate with a new U.S. administration, an Obama administration, or even a McCain administration? Uh, Senator John McCain just recently changed his position and said that he was ready to engage, if he were to become president, in direct negotiations with Iran at the foreign minister level. Mother, um, with regards to American politicians, we need to pass judgment and study their comments once they are in office. Before they hold office and once they leave office, they make some good comments, but they cannot be seriously studied. We, of course, pay attention to those because in what they say and what they do, well, what they do happens once they are in the White House. But would you, Foreign Minister of Iran, Manuchar Mutaki, be ready to sit across the table with the next U.S. Secretary of State? As I said, we are not just satisfied with a show to a photo op if you will. We think that the issues that exist between us are substantial and a clear response or resolution should be given to us by American parties, by the American side. A representative from the American government participated in the Geneva talks. They said that Mr. Burns represents the president in the Geneva meetings. At the highest levels, we welcomed the gentleman's presence. If this is a new approach when it comes to the nuclear issue, this should be allowed to reach fruition. In other words, we should support new negotiations, all of us, and such a negotiation must lead to a new agreement between all parties. Based on that agreement, we are ready to take our own steps, and the other side needs to take its own steps as well. The U.S., France, and Israel have made it quite clear that they will not accept a nuclear uh, Iran, and that uh, hence the military option against your nuclear facilities was on the table. These threats seem to have subsided uh, lately, but how seriously do you still take the threat, the possibility of a U.S. or an Israeli strike against uh, Iranian nuclear facilities, and how would you respond? The Zionist regime, as far as we are concerned, is, is not in a position to talk about such threats or level such threats. The U.S. and France, their problem is that they cannot oppose Iran's peaceful nuclear energy. Therefore, they try to cover up their other political intentions, keep it behind an allegation of an atomic bomb. This is 
completely false to a large extent the international public opinion has come to understand the truth the rest will be will be brought to light as well they want they, they don't want iran to have such high technology in some as i said earlier they want only a handful of countries to serve as a market and monopolize nuclear fuel and its provision. We have this technology, we have this capacity, we want to have this inside the country. But when it comes to a military attack, there might have been certain parties to engage in such an attack but i think cooler heads prevailed and wise people prevailed because once they involve in such a catastrophe for them what is going to happen to them later and uh, also u.s public opinion for that matter everyone is saying that the americans have failed inside afghanistan and iraq so that is very real for them their failures in those two countries so the u.s nor for that matter the zionist regime are in no position to engage in a new misadventure in the region. The Israelis are still contending with the aftershocks of the 33 Le day Lebanon war. This is still creating problems domestically for the Zionist regime. You refer to Iran as a Zionist regime, and President Ahmadinejad just a few days ago before the General Assembly also castigated what he called the Zionist regime. Are these statements truly helpful? Well, this regime, we do not recognize it. This is not something which we have decided today or five years ago, for that matter. In the past 30 years after the victory of the Islamic Revolution, we initially refused to recognize two regimes, despite the fact that the Shah's regime had the best of relations with them. One was the apartheid regime in the South Africa, the other is the Zionist regime in Palestine. We believe that these two regimes did not reflect the true wishes of the local inhabitant. Therefore, once the apartheid regime, because of the will and the determination of the South African people, was toppled and a popular system of government took its place, we established the best of relations with South Africa. I, when it comes to Palestine, actually I was meeting His Excellency the Secretary General of the United Nations a few minutes ago. My president also met with the gentleman last week. In these two meetings, we have talked about the ideas, a plan by the Islamic Republic of Iran to find a fundamental solution, a democratic solution to the Palestinian issue. If I can briefly move to Iraq to ask you about this looming deadline on the 31st of December, the United Nations Security Council mandate by which foreign forces are stationed in Iraq, including the United States forces, expires. The Iraqi government has been trying to negotiate an agreement, a bilateral agreement with the United States. There seemed to be a deadlock. Which option would you, would Iran prefer, that Iraq comes back to the Security Council for another mandate or engages in a bilateral agreement with the United States? In the past six months, we have seen a somewhat improvement inside Iraq and simultaneously we see that the dossiers which relate to the administration of Iraq, including security dossiers, are increasingly being handed over to the Iraqi government and this is one of the main contributors to that improvement. If this analysis is correct, then it is high time for the Americans to plan for their departure from Iraq. We think that this is the best 
option that Americans can take in these conditions. So, if they do otherwise, the end result will be similar to what has happened in the past six years. Our impression from the Iraqi people, Iraqi officials, Iraqi religious leaders is that there is no acceptance and uh, no, uh, no interest in this security pact. And the Americans should not keep the Iraqis hostage under Chapter 7 to impose their ideas and will on them. Mr. Madam Chair, thank you very much for your time. I thank you very much.